A drone is a name that's kind of gotten out in the media, uh, kind of viral. It, it actually really is inaccurate in a lot of different aspects. Um, the military call it UASs, uh, but really a drone would probably be closest uh, described as a uh, military vehicle that flies autonomously, carries armament. For me, a drone is more of an umbrella term of anything that flies through the air autonomously without, without a pilot on board. So you could have the whole gamut of aircraft being from, from uh, a FedEx a transport vehicle um, that doesn't have a pilot on board to a military drone. A, a drone is just the popular word these days for wh what I know as a model aircraft, which I've been flying for 20 years. Uh, I think you know, the public understands that a drone is something that's flying remotely, uh, someone on the ground controlling it, and that's the word everyone seems to be using. A drone is like a flying robot. Um, basically, uh, it can carry like a rocket launcher or, um, you know, it drops grenades. Basically, it's just a tool for destruction, death, horror, and privacy invasion. Why are they called drones? Yeah. Because isn't that what they called them in Star Wars? Uh, I think the main reason that people resort to calling them drones is because they, they don't fully know what they are. Uh, unmanned aerial system is, is a nice terminology for, uh, for the military. Uh, for us, it's simply a radio-controlled aircraft that has uh, some form of capturing or transmitting a video signal. You know, if you go all the way back into military history, the original, well, you go all the way back in language, you talk about drone bees. Uh, but I, I think in terms of aviation history, uh, you've got drones that were being used for target practice by the military. They were basically just rockets with wings, uh, no sophisticated control or anything, and they were just used for target practice. And they, they called them drones, like the worker bee drones that are flying around a hive. I don't, I don't think they can. At, at, at some level, a drone it most often is being controlled by a radio control pilot. Uh, uh, in some cases, you can program GPS coordinates, but that's still a person who's putting in the coordinates uh, for the flight plan. So uh, on every level, at some point, there's a human that's telling that machine what to do. Yeah, drones are conscious. They're able to make decisions. Um, they have uh, what you'd call a free will. Um, they are conscious, but they have no conscience, which means they can choose to do what they want, but they have no guilt or shame when it comes to the results of those things that they consciously do. Model aircraft and government military drones are very, very different. Uh, one of the biggest differences is uh, military drones use satellites, so someone in Tennessee can be flying over in Iraq somewhere, uh, where model aircraft always have to be maintained line of sight, um, just for radio link and, and safety and getting your investment back. Um, they also can't carry massive amounts away, they can't fly for long durations, and they don't cost over you know $3 million each. Obviously, some of the military systems can fly very long distances, um, but I think that's the exception rather than the rule. The, in terms of hobbyists and even what we might call light commercial users, the, the photographers, the, the press, people who want to just take a, an aerial photo of a scene or want to do some building inspection, those are all close-in applications where people are going to fly very light systems, really very close to where they are operating from. Fixed-wing model aircraft do give the best range and duration, uh, but with that, you don't have the ability to stop and to, to observe. Uh, and even with that said, uh, what we consider a good flight time is really 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, to go a great distance in 15, 20 minutes when most of these travel under 40 miles an hour is very impractical. Our biggest challenge with uh, multi-rotors and with aircraft is to get a, a longer flight, you have to carry more batteries. Um, that takes up probably 90% of the weight carrying capabilities of both multi-rotors and airplanes. Um, so all of your energy is put towards flight duration, which once again is about 15, maybe 20 minutes on a really good setup. Um, you're not going to have any extra capacity to carry anything that can do anyone harm. Uh, yeah, drones can carry really heavy stuff. Um, I think uh, what the government um, is doing now is actually having them carry babies um, to put the storks out of, out of the job. I, I don't think they're an especially great danger. We, we've had model aircraft around uh, for almost 100 years and like anything else like golfing and baseball, people will get hurt in 
basically minor ways and occasionally there's a bad accident, but we've handled that with the torch system for all these decades with no problem. So while there's a, a small danger that something that's flying might hurt you in some way, I don't think that's on the same order as uh, the danger posed by a person in an airplane tens of thousands of pounds of metal, gallons of fuel that you know can, can not only hurt the people on board, but also hurt people on the ground. Uh, going back to what we talked about earlier, you know, with the uh, taking over the storks job and delivering babies, those drones, when that, when that consciousness takes over and they start doing what they will darn well please to do, who's to say that it won't start picking up somebody else's baby and delivering it to the wrong parents? Generally, the hobbyists stick to themselves. They are not um, kind of open towards flying among other people. So this kind of gives gives them a cautious perspective on the on the, on the entire hobby. And on the other hand, you have governments abusing this wonderful technology for for war purposes, um, which is also shedding a negative light on our hobby as, as a whole. They would be throwing us into the same pot as, as somebody that's, that's using this technology to spy on, on foreign militaries. Just about anything can invade people's privacy. So, you know, when cell phone cameras first came out, people were worried about pictures in locker rooms, and that's certainly a concern. It was a concern, it still is. Uh, but this is like any other technology. It can be used for good things, it can be used for bad things. And it's not, we shouldn't regulate the, the technology out of existence, we should regulate the offensive conduct. So if someone is using a drone to invade someone's privacy, it's that invasion that should be regulated and prohibited, not, not the technology itself, which can be used for so many good things. Uh, these things are these drones are very rude. Um, I, I feel that they invade privacy left and right. You know, the other day I was I was in the shower and I am quite certain, or I was certain, that a drone was right on the other side of the shower curtain. Um, turns out it was one of those um, those little robots that goes around and sweeps my floor, which is also an invasion of privacy. Um, but the house is squeaky clean. Privacy is uh, something that's been raised a lot by the media and obviously should be a concern for everybody. Uh, but to invade someone's privacy using a, a multi-rotor or an aircraft with a camera is uh, uh, very impractical. Uh, the cameras on model airplanes uh, are oftentimes very wide angle. That's so you can see as much of your surroundings as possible. You have to get very, very close to be able to have any focus go inside a home. And at that point, you're gonna hear it. Um, the person that, that they're trying to invade the privacy is, is gonna hear it, they're gonna see it. I mean, proper regulations will make the hobby safer in the end, because right now nobody really knows what's allowed. Everybody talks about the 400 feet or 500 feet um, or 500 meters or whatever the, the distances are allowed. Um, but it's, it's not really, there are no really clear rules, so it's not really safe. I mean, most of the unsafe use of model aircraft that you see are actually in the United States for this very reason, because nobody really knows clearly what uh, are the things that you can and cannot do. And as soon as you have those regulations uh, in place, um, businesses can start to develop services around those rules. Well, I, there's an argument at least that there's no current specific regulation concerning uh, unmanned aircraft or, or drones. Um, and the question is, you know, wh where do we need to go on the spectrum? Do we, do we have no regulation at all, apart from what exists in tort law? If someone gets hurt, they can sue for personal injury. Um, all the way up to manned aircraft standards, where every little part needs to be certified, x-rayed, designed to, to military specifications. That kind of thing makes sense if you have people on board um, and, and you're posing a real threat to people on the ground or in the air. But I think for most of these commercial and certainly recreational applications, you're really falling on, on the low end of the spectrum. You're, you're close to the ground, you're only flying a few pounds in the air, it's battery powered, it's really not posing a threat. So I, I think light regulation to make sure you know people know where they are, they understand how to use their equipment, they have some experience using it before they take it to a location where it could pose harm to people. I think the common sense approach makes sense. Friends, I want to thank you for uh, watching. I want to thank you also for being part of this great hobby community. Um, the wonderful things this hobby brings to people in their lives, whether it's civil benefits, you know, search and rescue, or uh, advancing the technology to enable people to uh, to keep other people safe. Um, has grown so much in the past couple of years. Uh, but I do challenge you to always operate safe, always put people first. Um, these are just planes. These are just uh, things that we do for our enjoyment. And putting other people in danger is not the way to have fun. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this cleared up some common myths about drones and also model aircraft.
See you next time.